In Europe, shortly after the War of the Roses, on 28th of June 1491 at the Palace of Placentia in Greenwich, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York had a son. They named him Henry Tudor. On 15th of April 1509, at just 17, Henry Tudor became King Henry VIII. An intellectual, he was the first English king with a modern humanist education. Later in June, Henry married Catherine of Aragon. England is very much part of Europe and pays its church taxes to Rome, where Rome decides doctrine. So who are the heads of Rome before Henry became king? Pope Innocent VIII signed a paper bull to prosecute witchcraft in Germany, confirmed Thomas de Torquemada as Grand Inquisitor of Spain. Thanks to Alexander VI, one of the most controversial of the Renaissance popes, his Italianized Valencian surname, Borgia, became a byword for libertinism and nepotism, and this characterized his pontificate. Lucretia Borgia was just one of his many children to mistresses. Pope Pius III had one of the shortest pontificates from 22nd of September to 18th of October 1503. Nicknamed the Fearsome Pope, Pope Julius II was a patron of the arts commissioning the rebuilding of St Peter's Basilica and Michelangelo's painting of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Over 15 years later, Catherine still hadn't delivered a son. Wanting a male heir, Anne Boleyn was his new project. He called this his great matter. Anne refused to become his mistress, so in 1527 he applied to Pope Clement VII, who said no, 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 no. This refusal triggered his rejection of papal supremacy, and through various acts of parliament created the English Reformation, the Church of England, and Defender of the Faith. The dissolution of the monasteries, an efficient process with minimal resistance, brought the crown some 90,000 a year. The nation Church of England decides doctrine and practice. In the winter of 1532, Henry married Anne, and nine months later, on 7th of September 1533, she gave birth to a daughter, Elizabeth in honour of Henry's mother, Elizabeth of York. Meanwhile in Rome, Pope Leo X borrowed and spent heavily and is remembered for granting indulgences for those who donated to reconstruct St Peter's Basilica. Then a Dutchman, Pope Adrian VI, was only Pope from 9th of January 1522 until his death on 14th of September 1523, and so unable to carry out any reforms. Pope Clement VII, in addition to excessive nepotism to his Medici relatives in the sack of Rome, it was under his papacy that Henry led the English Parliament to pass the Act of Supremacy in 1534 that established the Independent Church of England and the break from the Catholic Church. Pope Paul III had three sons and two daughters by his mistress Silvio Ruffini. He also created the Duke of Parma in 1545 for the son called Pier Luigi Farnese. He decreed the second and final excommunication of King Henry VIII in December 1538. Sadly, on 28th of January 1547, hastened by obesity, Henry VIII, aged just 55, died in the Palace of Whitehall. He is buried in St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, next to Jane Seymour. An intellectual with a modern humanist education, Henry's image as the first Renaissance man, his court as the centre of scholarly, artistic innovation, and sheer scale of his initiatives mean his legacy lives on today. Alas, the future is always uncertain. Subsequent rulers were Edward VI, 1547-1553, aged just nine, the realm was governed by a Regency Council. Lady Jane Grey in 1553 was the Nine-Day Queen. Mary I from 1553 to 1558, nicknamed the Bloody Mary for her execution of Protestants, she brought back Roman Catholicism and had over 280 religious dissenters burned at the stake. And then Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I, 1558-1603. She was one of the best educated women of her generation. An accomplished linguist, able to speak Welsh, Cornish, Lowland Scots and Irish Gaelic, in, ad in addition to her native English. Her considerable writings have been published by Chicago Press and online at, at LibriVox. Her personal motto was Semper Edem, or Always the Same, and another was Video Etesio, I See and I Say Nothing. In her accession speech, she said, I mean to direct all my actions by good advice and counsel. And so she did. Pragmatic, she was relatively tolerant and avoided systematic persecution. After the Pope declared her illegitimate in 1570, several conspiracies threatened her life, all of which were defeated with the help of her minister's secret service. In addition to Europe, she maintained commercial relationships with Russia, the Barbary States, Ottoman Empire and the rest, she united Sir Francis Drake, who circumnavigated the world, 
and who went on to successfully defend against the Spanish Armada. She gave her name to the Elizabethan era. The Elizabethan era. Queen at 25 and ruling for 44 years, she gave her name to the Elizabethan era, known as the Golden Age. The Act of Supremacy became law on 8th of May 1559. She was pragmatic and more moderate than her predecessors. Elizabeth established an English church that helped shape a national identity and remains in place today. Britannia came to be viewed as a personification of Britain. It was good to be British. Part of her accession speech said, I mean to direct all my actions by good advice and counsel. Her spymaster Francis Walsingham staff included the cryptographer Thomas Felipes, who was an expert in deciphering letters and forgery, and Arthur Gregory, who was skilled at breaking and repairing seals without detection. Already trading in Europe, Russia, Barbary Coast, and Ottoman Empire, the Age of Discovery brought new opportunities across the world. Elizabeth I opened the first royal exchange in 1571. It was founded by English financier Thomas Gresham, here Gresham's Law, a model on the Antwerp Bourse. The discovery of America exerted a profound influence on England by extending the range of her markets. The New World promoted the growth of entrepreneurs. Elizabeth knighted Sir Francis Drake after circumnavigating the world, and the English fleet defeated the Spanish Armada. English theatre reached its highest peaks with the likes of William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe. The Elizabethan era is regarded as the height of the English Renaissance. Her foreign policy was largely defensive. Her interests were commerce. Elizabeth's reign became idealised as a time when Crown, Church and Parliament had worked in constitutional balance. Sadly, Elizabeth I died on 24th of March 1603 at Richmond Palace. The Crown lives on, and so a few hours later, Robert Cecil and the Privy Council set their plans in motion and proclaimed James VI of Scotland as James I of England. She is buried with her half-sister Mary in Westminster Abbey. Once again, the future is uncertain. Thanks for watching Sovereignty. My personal view from history.